truth, isn't it? Amen. Uh, thank you for those uh, wonderful, encouraging words through song. I'm surprised they could sing it all because they were in here practicing today and I barged in on them and scared them half to death. And uh, I didn't know if they was even going to come back to church tonight or not. But I uh, appreciate the, the good singing there. We'll turn that back over to them here in just a minute. And thank you guys for being here tonight. Appreciate our folks joining us by live stream. We had another gentleman. Uh, from over in Kentucky that uh, has been watching our live stream. God laid on his heart to, uh, to uh, start supporting our live stream and uh, financially and supporting our ministries here financially. And it is a humbling thing. It really truly is a humbling thing that people think enough of the ministries here at Calvary Baptist Church to want to be a part of that financially. And uh, we just want to say thank you and appreciate you guys joining us tonight as well. Uh, tonight is question and answer time, and we'll be back in the box pulling out questions. I've been getting some uh, on my phone, even as I was coming up here to the pulpit, uh, trying to look through and sort through those. Uh, if you've got questions on live stream tonight, uh, make sure that you send them through if they're follow-up questions to another question or whatever it may be. And Mr. Justin is going to make sure that he sends that directly to my phone, and I'll have it up here with me in, my, in the, in the uh, pulpit. Well, technology is kind of neat, ain't it? Uh, and the way things work like that, if it actually works right. And, uh, but anyway, we'll be in the book tonight. We'll be pulling some questions out. And you guys here have liberty to do follow-up questions as well. Uh, just raise your hand, holler, whatever it is. And uh, we'll try to get you uh, get your question filled as quickly as we possibly can. Now, next Wednesday night, we'll be back on our UFO study and digging back into it. It seems almost on a daily basis that there are new things that are coming out. Uh, new things that are coming on the news, different things that are coming up, and so it, it is a definitely a subject that needs to be covered right now. And so uh, we're thankful that we've got a book that has those answers in it. Amen. Mm -hmm. I want to say too, just to kind of encourage you and let you know what's going on while you're not here in the sanctuary. We've been going back out on visitation on uh, Tuesday nights at six thirty. Uh, we had started out with uh, uh, me and Raz went out. Uh, last week, and Raz, was there anybody else that went out with us last week? There was a couple that, uh, oh, Alicia showed up, that's what it was. We didn't have another lady for her, though. So we sent her home. Uh, but Raz and I went out last week. We had two souls saved on visitation last week. Went out last night, we had nine wow. that went out last night on visitation and had uh, another soul saved last night. And we were able to hit uh, probably collectively about 20-something houses last night. We've got packets that we're handing out uh, that have uh, just very valuable information from recovery home to uh, things to help people uh, in the everyday life struggles that they're going through, information about the church, and it has worked so wonderfully. And I want to encourage anybody that would like to be a part of that, uh, even if you're not comfortable, that is okay. We had several that were not comfortable uh, with speaking or talking last night. We paired them up with folks that are kind of get an internship going, and so if you want to come out and be a part of that, we would love to have you. We had uh, three ladies that went out last night, and uh, they went out together, so we'll send the ladies out together. We can take the guys and send them out together, and, uh, and we break up and go to different places. Now, with that said, uh, we will be, as soon as the new convert class is finished and we get our graduates through that, uh, we are going to hold a training session for the soul winning team, for the conversion team. And we'll bring everybody in, including the veterans, uh, because we uh, uh, love to have their input since they've been at it for a while, some things that, uh, you know, maybe they've experienced in testimony time and so forth. And so if you're interested in being a part of that, we definitely want you to be a part of that. It is all of our jobs to, to try to reach the loss. Yeah. Okay, it's not just one or two people. And I know everybody cannot be there on Tuesday night, uh, and everybody kind of sometimes has to do their own thing. But if you can be there on Tuesday night, you'd like to be a part of that. Uh, don't let fear keep you from doing something that amazing. All of our guys, Travis went last night, and uh, Matt, and me and Matt teamed up, went up to the trailer park, and uh, and uh, Travis and CJ, it was Travis and Raz went out, yeah, and Nathaniel and CJ went out, and then we had the ladies that went out, and we all come back, man, and it was awesome. It is just, it was such a blessing. I was talking to Travis tonight, he said, man, I'm ready to go back out again, and so, uh, you guys that would like to be a part of that, please come out and we'll pair you up. And I'm telling you, it is truly the adventure of a lifetime. Anybody that says Christianity is bored has clearly never went and knocked on a door before. Right. Not in Lee County, Virginia, anyway. I'll put it that way. 
CJ came back with some stories. We were crying last night with some of the things they encountered. But anyway, uh, Lee, Lee County, Virginia is a very unique place. I have to say that. I figured that out after being here almost 19 years now. It's starting to dawn on me. This is different. Lee County is different. Some of y'all are really different. In here, uh, but, man, boy, we sure are glad that uh, God is using that. We're seeing souls say this has just been awesome. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight and ask for God's blessings on our time, and then we'll turn back over to the ladies. Father, we come to you tonight just thanking you, Lord, for being so good to us, allowing us to be able to be here and uh, to be a part of this service, to have question and answer time tonight. We thank you for the souls that have been saved on the, with the conversion team. And, Father, that it's just been so great. We appreciate you allowing us to be able to go back out again and do that. Father, we pray tonight that you would bless the next song, and the Lord bless the question and answer time. And, Lord, that you would instruct us and, 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 Lord, help us to understand these things that are being asked about, Lord. It's such a wonderful way to learn your word. And we ask God tonight that you would open our hearts and minds to receive it. Help me to answer the questions uh, in a very clear, concise, and simple way. And, Father, we want to pray for our kids tonight as they're gathering, that you would bless and be with them, uh, Lord God. And uh, may you use this time to touch their hearts and their lives as well. And, Father, as we bow before you tonight, we ask for your blessings, Lord, on the time that we have. Keep Satan from interfering with it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
singing. I like the way they blended that on in there with that song. I've not heard it like that before. That was wonderful, wonderful. All right, we have our box of questions, and uh, we're going to start digging into these questions tonight in no particular order. And uh, I've got them all folded up here, so let's go ahead and draw one out and see what we got. This particular question, and I have not been asked this in a long time, and I think this is a wonderful question. Uh, the question is this, is the King James Version the same as the authorized King James Version? Now you may think, what? But let me explain. That is an absolutely fantastic question. Uh, the question is, is the King James Version, if you pick up a Bible that says King James Version, is that the same as the authorized King James Version? And you'll hear me say multiple times over um, that uh, the authorized King James Version is God's perfect word for uh, the English-speaking people. And, um, and then you can find it right here in the front of your Bible where it says authorized King James Version, most of you here tonight. So if you pick up one that does not have that word authorized on it and it says King James Version, is that the same thing? Well, maybe, but most likely no. Let me explain why I say that. I've got a couple places we're going to turn to tonight. And I'm going to show you tonight, and I know that uh, we're probably not... Oh, there's a question stuck to the back of that Bible. <laughs> Um, this particular Bible here, let me see if I can get to it. Here we go. Here we go. This particular Bible here, you can find at a lot of Christian bookstores. It is published by uh, Nelson. It's all taped up on the end there, but it's, it's published by Nelson. And it's called the King James Study Bible. And it simply says King James Version, the King James Study Bible, all right? And so let's take this Bible here, published by Nelson, and see if it is exactly the same as our authorized King James Version Bible. Um, this Bible right here I have had since 1995. It's in pretty rough shape. Um, and I have been through it multiplied times over. This is just a sample tonight of what I'm going to show you. Uh, I want you to go to Acts chapter 7 and verse 45. Acts chapter 7 and verse 45. The very first booklet I ever wrote, which I've never actually published it like I did the Lamp booklet. I have intentions possibly of doing that at some day in the future uh, whenever financially and time-wise I can get to that point. But the very first booklet I ever wrote was a booklet called Every Word of God. And it, is, it was based on what I'm about to show you tonight. As a matter of fact, we teach a college uh, Bible college course on that subject that's very detailed um, and goes into a lot of things, a lot of deep detail. Um, but I want to read out of this Bible, which I just showed you, says King James Version. And I want you to compare it with your Bible, Acts chapter 7, verse 45, and see if you can tell a difference in this verse. Acts chapter 7, verse 45, and I'm going to read it word for word. So listen very carefully, follow along with me in Acts chapter 7, verse 45. This Bible, called a King James Bible, or King James Version, says this, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Joshua into the possession of the Gentiles whom God drove out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. Did anybody notice the difference? Yeah. What was the difference? Alright, the authorized King James Version said Jesus. This Nelson King James Bible changed it to Joshua. And in doing so, we don't have time to go into this. There is a Matter of fact, one of our uh, uh, oral examination questions in Bible college dealt with this particular verse right here. So there's a very detailed explanation as to why the word Jesus, which you can find right here. Uh, this is a 1611 authorized King James Version photographic reproduction. It's exactly what came in 1611 off the assembly line. And if you look at Acts chapter 7, verse 45, it has Jesus there, just like our authorized King James Bible has Jesus 
But these guys took it upon themselves to change it to Joshua. Okay? And in doing so, by changing it from J Jesus to Joshua, there's great truths that are lost, some of which are practical and others are prophetic. And it actually, by removing that one word, eliminates over 100 Bible references that give you information about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ by taking that one word out. Okay, so would you, would you agree with me that to change that word is significant? Would you agree with me that those two words are not the same? Would you agree with me they tried to pull this off as a King James Bible? All right, let me show you another place where the same thing happens. Where, or not the same thing, but another word uh, is different. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. <clears throat> By the way, in our bookstore, we only sell authorized... King James Bibles. Second Thessalonians, not Second Thessalonians, Second Timothy, chapter three. And follow along with me. We're going to begin in verse 16 for context, and we're going to go down to verse 17. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All right, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Did anybody notice that change, that subtle change? The word is not thoroughly. It's throughly. And by definition, the word thoroughly and throughly are not the same word. As a matter of fact, we're dealing with the scriptures. And if you look over, the, talking about God's perfect word, if you look over, and we don't have time to turn here tonight, but to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, it tells you that the word of God is able to change three things. Number one, it is able to change your mind because the Bible says the, uh, the Word of God is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It uh, uh, Dividing asunder or piercing asunder unto the soul okay, and the spirit. Alright? The joints and the marrow and the heart. Has everybody got that? All those things are affected. Now let me ask you a question. Is that all the way down to the very core of you? So whenever you look at this, the word thoroughly is external and only external. If you wash your car thoroughly, okay, that means that you wash the outside of it, but you might not have washed the inside of it. If you wash your car thoroughly, that means that you washed it from the outside and the inside and cleaned it up on the inside. So whenever you look at the Word of God, it's talking about the actual inspired Word of God will affect you throughly. In other words, it goes all the way to the very inside of you. It won't just clean you up on the outside, but it'll clean you up on the inside. And by definition, according to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, throughly and thoroughly are two different words. Thoroughly is strictly external. Throughly is all the way down through to the very middle. Now, is that a significant change? Yeah. Absolutely. Again, a word that is not the same, even though this is called a King James Bible. Another one, uh, Ezekiel 35 and 6. <clears throat> and this is just a sample. That entire booklet that I wrote has... Oh, gosh. I don't know, CJ. How many words did we cover in, in every word of God? Probably 30 or more. And uh, all of them are in this one Bible here. Ezekiel 30, uh, 35, <clears throat> verse 6. Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 6. <clears throat> Ezekiel 35 and 6, follow along. 
It says, Therefore as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee, since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Do anybody see a difference? The word in the authorized King James Bible is sith, S-I-T-H. The word in this so-called King James Bible has been changed to since. There is a difference. The word sith means a long period of time where something evil or terrible is being done. That is a completely different word from since. Sith means a long period of time where something evil or terrible is being done. Let me ask y'all a question, those of you that are very worldly in here tonight. What are the bad guys called in Star Wars? Say it. Don't be... I know you're worldly. Go ahead and say it. The Sith. The Sith Lord. Darth Vader was a Sith Lord. They're the bad guys. And the uh, existence of them is supposed to be perpetual. And it literally matches. That's where they got the word Sith from. Is from the King James Bible. Because that's the only place it shows up. And it's up. So to change that word to sense. Completely eliminates a great truth. That is found in the context of the scriptures right here. As a matter of fact. There are two Star Wars that take place in the Bible. There's nothing new. These people didn't make this up. They robbed it from the Word of God. There's a Star Wars that, talk, uh, that takes place in Judges chapter 5 and verse 20. And then there's a Star Wars that takes place in Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 through 8. And uh, both of them involve Siths, if you will. Uh, those that for a long period of time uh, did something evil or terrible. Okay? So, again, that is being changed. Now, that is just a small sample. So, when I say authorized King James Version Bible, there's a reason for that. I put the word authorized on the front of it because it is the perfect, pure Word of God. And just because it says King James Bible does not mean that it is the authorized King James Bible. Now, let me give you a couple of Bibles to avoid. All right? Um, Zondervan, Nelson, Holman... Um, most of those Bible companies have, have changed these words. Zondervan, uh, Holman, and Nelson. You, you need to stay away from those. <clears throat> okay? Now, generally speaking, Oxford, Cambridge, the Thompson Chain people, um, at least they used to be. I don't know about Thompson Chain now, but, but the old Thompson Chain um, and uh, the Cambridge, the Oxford, which Oxford produced the Schofield. Of course, our local church Bible publishers and church Bible publishers, uh, all of those are authorized King James Version Bibles. You can trust the, the Oxford, uh, if it says authorized King James Version, you can trust the Oxford, the Cambridge, um, and uh, Thompson Chain, and local church Bible publishers and church Bible publishers. In other words, anything we've got in there in the store, um, the... Um, Rock of Ages study Bible is authorized King James Version as well. So uh, we, we've taken very great care to make sure you've got the right book and with the right words. Because you know what the Bible says about itself? It says every word of God is pure. And we found just in a few moments time three words that were not pure in this so-called King James Bible. And by my studying and what I've looked at, uh, it seems that they tried to transition that into what is known as the Old American Standard Version of 1901. It looks like it matches up pretty consistently with that throughout. And so we need to make sure that we've got an authorized King James Bible in our hands. Anybody got any questions um, about that or, or any follow-up questions about that? All right. Okay, good to have the book tonight. Amen? Uh, yeah. Bill, yeah. The Bibles that have the, um, like the, the letters to the I have not found one yet that wasn't. Uh, so yeah, what CJ's asking is if in the front of your Bible you got what's called the Epistle Dedicatory to uh, to King James and the translator to the reader that the translators wrote to the readers and to King James, both of which are found in the 1611 and they're found commonly in especially local church. And church Bible publishers usually include them. Cambridge definitely always does. 
Oxford occasionally, but if you find that in there, yes, you probably are looking at an authorized King James Version Bible. <clears throat> there, so. Any other questions there? All right, next question. All right, this question here comes from one of our live streamers. And it says, I know when you were covering Revelations, you mentioned that a fog would come over the people's minds during the tribulation. Do you think that is somewhat, that somewhat is going on today with all of this discord, wokeism, and so forth going on in the country? Uh, and so uh, that, let, let me answer that question in two parts. Number one, <clears throat> I want you to go to the tribulation. We need to start there and understand exactly what I was talking about. So. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 very quickly. Oh, man, I just knocked my question off where to go. Okay. Um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. So we can clarify exactly what we're dealing with here. <clears throat> This is a tribulation passage dealing with the Antichrist. And uh, in particular, this particular passage deals primarily with the last half of the tribulation. So the last three and a half years of the seven-year tribulation. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11, which by the way, we will not be there for the tribulation. If you're saved, you'll be raptured out. No. And you will not be there. You said, but I heard about a mid-tribulation rapture. Well, there is one, but it has nothing to do with you and I. And I can show you that in Scripture. Okay, 2 Thessalonians 2.11. The Bible says that for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So that's that fog, that delusion, if you would, um, that, that is going to come over the people that are in the tribulation, that have heard the gospel, chose to reject it, and then they're under the influence of the Antichrist. Uh, there is going to be a delusion that is going to be sent. Now, let me take that one step further. Go with me back to Isaiah 66 and 4. And I want to show you one of the most frightening passages that you'll ever see. Isaiah 66 and verse 4. Isaiah chapter 66. And 5 verse 4, the Lord says this, now listen very carefully, I also will choose their delusions. So in other words, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to get the same delusion. Notice the word delusions, plural. It didn't say delusion, it said delusions. And it says the Lord will choose them. So in the tribulation period, when that time comes, God is going to send Probably through lying spirits like he did in the Old Testament. He's going to allow lying demonic spirits to go out to those that have rejected the truth and were left behind after the rapture. And there will be a delusion. And he'll pick the delusions uh, that will overcome these people. And they're not all going to be the same. There will be different delusions for different people. And I don't know exactly what they're going to be, but the Lord says I'm going to choose them. Now, I don't know how that's going to work, but I know the book is right, and it clearly states that. Amen? So, yes, that is going to be happening in the tribulation. But what about today? What is going on today? Well, there's a conditioning effect for that. There is a lot of deception today. There is no question about that. From the critical race theory, uh, all the, the woke mentality that's going on, all these things are nothing but deception. The attempts to erase our history uh, that, uh, of our country. I, I mean, this is all a conditioning effect. Uh, where these things are beginning to happen right before our very eyes, even before the tribulation. Go to 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4, and notice what, what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. The Bible says this, in whom, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, in whom the God of this world, which we know to be Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So there's a blindness that is coming over these people today. And one of the things that we have to do is when we encounter somebody that is blinded, like a CJ that witness to a guy, last night that was a wicked, clearly blinded, didn't want anything to do with the true Christ, and, 
and uh, was very set in his witchcraft ways. And uh, there's a blindness. So you have to pray one prayer. That is, God remove the blinders before it's too late. God remove the blinders. And God will remove the blinders. Now, maybe for a split second, that person says no. They see the light. They don't want anything to do with it. God will let the blinders go back on, and that may be the last time he deals with them. But we need to pray that God removes the blinders. But a second thing here in relation to that, go with me to 1 John 4. 1 John 4, scary if you're not saved, amen? amen. 1 John chapter 4. <clears throat> and I want you to notice the context here. 1 John chapter 4, look at verse 1. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That was the advice that was given to Muhammad when he was in the cave and that 600 winged demon, not Gabriel, but he called it Gabriel, appeared to him and started to give him the, the Quran and the information about the Quran and went to a Christian and said, what do I do? And they said, try the spirits. And you know what he did? He went back and he did not do that. And the rest is history. That is a known fact. In verse 2 it says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of what? So, and, and notice this now. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. So yes, there is a delusionary setup right now that a lot of people are fooled. Now notice the Spirit, what the Spirit does. Look at verse 6. It said, We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the Spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit, but look at the next one. The Spirit of what? Error. error. And that Spirit of error is being fed into the hearts of people that have rejected Christ today, and it has created a, a false perception that is sending thousands of people to hell. Whether that false perception, that spirit of error, is evolution, Buddhism, uh, Islam, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, whatever it is, cultism, whatever it may be out there, ritualistic Catholicism, you name it, uh, that delusion has come, has come in and has blinded people. And they, it's hard to deal with them when they get to that point. So, yes, I believe there is a conditioning effect for that going on right now. But whenever we're gone, it will come out absolutely in full force. Any questions about that? All right. All right. Another question here from online. It says, I hear online preachers today, and I have noticed it's at some of the bigger mega churches that they're talking about the prosperity gospel. And during the sermon, their sermons, they don't really work through the scriptures. What are your thoughts on this? And are, there, are they doing their congregations a disservice? It seems like they're all focusing on how to get what each person wants now in the physical world. Uh, number one, there is no such thing as the prosperity gospel. That is not found in Scripture. There is no prosperity gospel in Scripture. That is something that they manufacture and that they made up and that falls under the category of wives' tales and fables. Okay? God never preached a prosperity gospel. The Lord Jesus Christ never preached a prosperity gospel. Not one person in the Bible that ever preached a sermon preached a prosperity gospel. That is a modern, new age thing. Now, let, let me show you something here. Go with me to... Um, <coughs> Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. And find verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's actually the opposite of that. Now God has no problem with you having wealth um, and things like that or having possessions. The problem is, is that it, the, or where the problem lies is when you make that a message from God, because that is not a message from God. The Bible says here, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, 
be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come and they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own what? Shall they keep to themselves teachers having itching ears? Now that thing of itching ears is really unique and very much needs to be studied out. I would highly recommend it. But let me sum it up for you just a little bit. In the Bible, over in the book of Isaiah, it calls, and, and also in Philippians chapter 2, it calls false teachers dogs. That's what it calls them, dogs. And that is the reference when it talks about itching ears. You know when a dog gets mites in its ears and their ears itch and they're constantly doing that? And when if you walk up and you take your hands and you start rubbing their ears, you ever heard them grunt? Oh, that's good. I mean, they, they'll be your best friend for life at that point. And you're rubbing their ears and they're mm, 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 grunting, grunting, grunting. That's what that's talking about. These teachers that preach and teach a prosperity gospel or false doctrine, they're called dogs and they like to have their ears rubbed by the people. And how do you rub the ears, the itching ears? What are they itching for? They're itching for praise and prosperity. And God warned about that. He said, don't listen to these people. And if there is a prosperity-driven gospel out there, it is not of God in any way, shape, or form. As a matter of fact, let me show you what God did say. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Again, he has no problem with you having wealth and things like that. But he has a problem when that's your primary goal. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. And let's see if this sounds anything like the modern day prosperity gospel. Let's see if this is the anti-prosperity gospel. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19, Jesus said, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moths nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and nor steal. Well, that kind of sounds like the opposite of that, doesn't it? Let me show you another spot here. Go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. First Timothy 6, 6, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and snare. And if you ever watch the lives of these prosperity-driven people, that's exactly what happens. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and predict, predict, uh, perdition. In verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I don't think we even need to say much more than that, do we? That pretty much sums it up. All right. Any questions about that? All right. Let's see what our next question is. When we... Um, and this is a very appropriate question for tonight. Uh, when we pray or are given our prayer request and we ask prayer for people who are not in church attendance or have open sin in their lives and possibly are even lost, are we to pray for their sickness or injury or are we to pray that they get saved and in fellowship with God? And the answer to that is both. We're to pray both. And let me explain why I say that. Go with me to Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Romans chapter 2, verse 4. The Bible says, Or despisest thou the riches and goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, knowing not that, now listen, the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Sometimes God will lead somebody to himself by allowing them to get sick and then supernaturally be healed so that there is a witness bearing 
testimony to their spirit that God is real, God is there, God loves them, and God wants to save them. And so sometimes that's exactly how that works. And so we ought to pray for healing, but here's how we ought to pray. We ought to pray, God, when you heal them, let them see that it came from you so that they will turn to you. Okay? Now let me tell you what happens. That prayer transitions at this point now. They get healed and they don't come to God. Then you switch your prayer. If they're still lost and they don't come to the Lord Jesus Christ, because we've seen that happen, people will beg for prayer, and then, then that prayer gets answered, and then you don't see them again. They don't want anything to do with God. The next thing you know, they're out posting Facebook you know, messages where they're out getting drunk and things like that. Okay, that is a slap in the face of a healing God. So now we transition and switch our prayers because I promise you there will be problems again for them. And when they show back up and they ask for prayer, then we change our prayer to God, do whatever it takes to break them. Do whatever it takes to break them. And get their attention so that they will get saved. Because if they don't get saved by the goodness of God, sometimes they like to get saved by the chastisement of God. Okay? But we start with the goodness. And we pray that God will let them see His goodness so that they get saved. And if they see it, then they turn away from it, then we change our prayer. Does that make sense? Okay? So that is the answer to that particular question. All right, any follow-ups on that one? All right. Okie dokie. Let's take one more question here. Okay. And then we'll have our prayer time. Uh, what is, is the significance of the 40 days? Uh, Moses was on the mount for 40 days. The Israelite children were in the wilderness for 40 uh, years. And uh, Noah, uh, it rained for 40 days. So they're talking about the number 40. What is the significance of the number 40? Well, the significance of the number 40 uh, in the Bible, numerology-wise, by the way, we have a whole course in Bible college on numerology where we cover what each one of these numbers, because God is a God of numbers, Okay. Uh, he made a musical scale with octaves and numbers that are associated. He's a God of math that CJ just loved that. Um, but his numbers are very meaningful. Now, the number 40 is the number for testing in the Bible. So anytime you see it show up, God's testing somebody. Let me give you some examples. Uh, in Genesis 7, 17, it rained 40 days and 40 nights. And God was testing uh, Noah and his family during that time while they were on the ark and the rain was coming. In Exodus 24, 18, Moses was on Mount Sinai 40 days and 40 nights while Israel was at the bottom of the mountain being tested on their faithfulness, and they failed. In Judges 3, 11, Israel was under judges, different judges that, that in times of testing for 40 years. Uh, 1 Kings 19, 8, Elijah was 40 days and 40 nights without food in a time of testing whenever he was on the run from Jezebel. Uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 2, Jesus was in the wilderness uh, without food for 40 days, uh, being tempted, of, and it was tempted of Satan. It was a time of testing for him. And, of course, Israel is in the wilderness for 40 years, being repeatedly tested by God. So anytime you see uh, the number 40 show up, it is a time of, of, of testing, if you will, um, and a time of uh, trials that are there. So any follow-up questions about that? Uh, yeah, Ron? Uh, Moses. Moses. Life was in three stages of 40 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had the 40 in Egypt, you had the 40 on the backside of the desert, then you had that 40. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. And all of those were tested. He was tested in Egypt, he was tested on the backside of the desert, he was tested on the other side. So, of course, the, the, the strange thing about it is he failed two out of the three. You ever notice that? He killed a dude in the first 40. And then he got mad and smoked the rock instead of speaking to it in the second 40 and didn't even get to take him into the promised land. So he, he was, yeah, two out of three, he blew it there. So, I mean, we're a good company when we blow it, ain't we? Man. Any other questions? All right. Good questions. I've still got more in here, a few. Uh, but we're going to stop here and take a prayer request up. Thank you. And anybody that's got online questions, send those in, and we'll put those in the box as well. Um, and I didn't get to. I had a couple come in all the way up, but the priority went into the box. And so we will uh, we'll put those that I got in here as well. So thank you all for joining us tonight. We're going to uh, give you a couple of quick announcements, take up our prayer request, and we're going to uh, stay in our sections tonight and pray. Um, First of all, this coming Sunday is our fifth Sunday. We'll be having our offering. 
uh, that will be going towards paying down the building. The kids are going to have a walk down Sunday morning and Sunday night, put their pennies, quarters, whatever money they get in, and then the adults will go and put their money in the bucket on the way out. We'll get a grand total and tell you what we can put towards that uh, to pay that down. Uh, we're in the knock it down and knock it out, as I said, phase, um, and we're so thankful. We're just we're so close, and uh, so we want to give as, as liberal as we, as we possibly can. Also, we'll be observing the Lord's Supper this coming Sunday night, so come prepare for that. We will not be in the book of James. Things are going to be a little bit different, and it's going to be a very, very sweet, very special time. Uh, also, we're having our oldies but goodies banquet, bingo night, uh, Saturday at uh, 6 o'clock at the Fellowship Hall for all those that are 55 and up. If you've not got a chance to put your name on the list and you're planning on attending, please do that. And there's going to be food, fellowship, prizes, bingo. It's going to be a wonderful time. It's a 50s theme. Uh, and so if you guys would uh, make sure that you put your name down so we can make sure we uh, are, are good on the food. And it's going to be sponsored by the middle and high school classes. So if you would remember that. Uh, September the 11th, uh, we'll be having our resource clinic for the homeless at uh, Anchor Baptist Church of Bristol, Virginia. Uh, that'll be from 9 until 2. We'll leave out of here early, head over there as a group. Um, and more than likely, we'll be taking the bus. Uh, so those of you that need a ride, you should be able to ride on the bus. And uh, we need folks that can help in any area, okay? You can put any area, or you can put clothes, or you can put food, or whatever. Uh, but uh, witnessing, whatever, we've got a ton of places. Um, and um, Or you can put anywhere but whatever. You know, just however you want to put it. We just need your name down so I can get that information uh, to Brother Denny Mitchell before uh, we arrive there so he'll have a list and he can plug you in. Bookstore will be open right after church tonight. Miss Tammy will get you uh, fixed up if you have needs there. And um, I believe that has got all my announcements. Any other announcements? Okay. Prayer request. I talked to Miss Lila today, um, and she got an absolutely fantastic report on her heart. And so they're ready to do hip surgery now. And so if you would, please pray for her. She said that should be within the next couple of weeks. Uh, she'll have an affirmative date on that. And uh, she is in miserable, miserable pain with her hip. But the good news is her heart is ready for it. And so if you would, please lift her up in prayer. Uh, talk to Connie Doherty uh, today. Martina is improving. She is doing better. I mean, honestly, that is a miracle of God. And so we're very thankful for that. I uh, talked to uh, Jim Carroll today. He said uh, that uh, overall they're doing pretty good with COVID, but Lisa is extremely sick right now. She is having all kinds of digestive issues with it. She is just super, super sick. Uh, so if you guys, what he said, especially pray for Miss Lisa Carroll. Uh, got a, uh, a good praise report on Charles Turner. He's doing a little bit better today. Uh, that's Bob's father, so continue to uh, lift him up in prayer. Uh, Heather Biggs' his younger brother, Walter Lawson, he used to come to church here years ago, uh, passed away. So if you could remember that family. And uh, Richard and Shirley Schuler, uh, Roger and Patty Akers, and Vicki Lewis. Remember all these folks uh, who stand in need of healing. And of course, all of our COVID folks, those that are being uh, quarantined and all that, we're kind of cycling through uh, students right now that are, are running into that classrooms and having to stay home. So if you would remember them and their parents. Uh, as well. All right, let's start on this side. Who's got outspoken over here? Uh, Jordan? Yeah, Jim, remember my mama. She's still over at rehab. Okay. She's kind of stuck right now. She's having a quarantine. She's got some kind of test that positive of viruses. She's okay. having to stay over by herself for two weeks. <clears throat> yeah, that's up. Okay, all right. Mr. Anthony? I got a praise for my sister. I'm home from the hospital. Amen. 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 Prayers. What a blessing. Well, God's good. Amen. 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 Uh, Mr. Andy. Uh, pray for Gary Hass and his family. Uh, they lost their daughter of uh, cancer. She, they found out like uh, every two weeks later she was gone. So um, it wasn't like a separate thing. It was you know, pretty quick and then dealing with it pretty hard. Okay. She was in her 40s. So okay. okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Anybody else over here? In this section here? Uh, Miss Sarah? I still remember Crystal Bailey and her family who are dealing with COVID, and her husband is actually in Norton Hospital with COVID pneumonia. Okay. Anybody else here? 
Yes. Oh, wow. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Continue to pray for healing there as well. Anybody else here? Uh, Mary? Yes. Okay. <coughs> mm. Well, that's encouraging. <laughs> Amen. All right. Uh, over here. Anybody here? Uh, we'll start here reading. Uh, Frank of Lies, she does the 14th of October from Tesla Heart. Of September 14th, right? Okay. Uh, October. 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 It's good. October. It's good. Okay. It's good. It's good. Already had the test. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Miss Laura? Remember me. I've got some doctors appointed. Okay, sister. All right. Anybody else here? Over here? Uh, Emma? Anybody else over here? Uh, Eric? Okay. Anybody else? All righty. Uh, I have a, another co worker. Uh, she kind of keeps to herself, but uh, she's a fellow teacher and she also has COVID. And I know that she has real bad asthma problems. Her name's uh, Marsha Kinsley. And uh, so I don't really know how she's doing right now. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to have and assign folks to pray in each section. So I'm going to get CJ to pray over this section and pray for uh, these folks here. Uh, I'll get uh, Sean, if you don't mind, to pray over this section here. And I will get uh, Travis, if you don't mind, to pray over this section. And so we'll go from here over. So it'll be CJ, Sean, Travis, and then over in this section, David. I'm going to get you to pray over this section for us, if you don't mind. And, uh, and then once David's done praying, we'll be dismissed at that point. So if you would, you can stay seated or you can stand up either way. <laughs> but we'll start up here, CJ, if you'll go ahead and pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, I thank you, God, for uh, the good time we've had in church tonight, God, for the good uh, singing, dear Lord, for the uh, question and answer time, Lord. And thank you that we have answers for your word, God.